What is happening, guys? Cowboy here, and we are back at the Road of Sacrifices, ready to continue on with our walkthrough. So this area can be a little bit tricky because of these bird guys. Um, best thing to do is get very aggressive and attack them. Basically, wings will explode out of their back, and after those wings get out, they get a uh, basically a lot more brutal. So we're going to plunging attack of this one. Grab at the Shriving Stone, which you use to <clears throat> remove any effects off of weapons. We're going to run over here and grab this real fast. Now, we're going to go up here, and we're going to do a plunging attack on another enemy. So, you guys might remember if you saw the Let's Play, these guys gave me quite a bit of trouble. Obviously, as you see now, we are just flying through them. Now, as you can see this way, you can't quite go over here. Um, we're going to be circling around to get to that platform that you kind of see over there. And that's actually going to be our, our first course of action here. So, right now you see two guys over there. Uh, but we want to kill the, the Mage Bird, if you will. I don't know if they have an actual name. Uh, but they can cast Poison. And you want to kill these guys as fast as you can. Because if you don't, they'll do a Screech. And it basically causes every other bird enemy in the vicinity to sprout their wings and go into that uh, that more deadly mode that I talked about earlier. So we've rolled down. Um, that's the actual way to leave this area, but we're going to go down here first. Now, right here, you'll find the NPC where you get the butcher knife. Uh, Mildred, Melinda, something with an M. Anyway, take them out. And then following that, we can pick up the brigand set. And down here, we have the Brigand Twin Daggers. And I may have already picked it up. I think I actually did when I ran over to grab the axe. Let me see if I have it on me. I must have already put it away. But you also pick up the uh, the Brigand Axe. If I remember, I want to say the axe is right here, kind of on this corpse's bum. Um, so grab that as well. Now, from here, we're going to circle around go up. We have two enemies, and then there's a Titanite shard up ahead. There will be no wings today, sir. And then from here, we're going to run and drop down and get some items. So, looking up ahead... You can see uh, there's a couple enemies on the bridge, and you can see another one of those caster birds up there. So what you're going to want to do here is go over to here, look down, you can see a platform, drop on down. And then we only have one dog to take on, and then two items. Two dogs to take on, excuse me. That is weird. I saw that bug happen on the uh, when I was playing through this on the Dex build on stream the other day as well. I haven't been able to fall through it as a player yet, personally. I'm not really wanting to try. Um, so we got our Braille Divine Tome, and then we should have Morn's Ring right here. Uh, Morn's Ring will boost miracles for you. So if you're running a uh, Faith build, decent thing to get now. As for the Divine Tome, that should go into your key items area. Uh, you give this back to the, um, I guess we'll call it the Cleric of Karim that is back over at uh, Firelink Shrine, and this will give you a couple of miracles you can purchase. And so the only other item in this area is an Ember. We're going to go get that right now, and then we hit the Halfway Fortress, which is where things actually kind of split off, as I mentioned at the end of the last video. Kill Red Eyes. And the other thing that's great about doing this drop-down path is all these enemies that you otherwise would have had to fight, um, it's just a lot easier to approach them coming from this way. So unfortunately the drop attack did not connect there. We're going to try and kill him before he gets all angry with the... There we go. And as you can see, if once the wings sprout, they're a little bit more of a pain in the ass. You know, they're, they're more wild, more reminiscent of Bloodborne-style enemies. But we still got him down. Now there's those two still. Once again, go take down the mage first. Goodbye, mage bird. Thank you for our ember. What are you doing? Don't you throw knives at me. That's rude. Ooh. Do be careful. You can fall off these edges. Um, similarly, you can knock the birds off them, but I mean, butcher knife just shreds them anyway. 
And then following this, we get to Halfway Fortress, which is, is where things really get going. Road of Sacrifices shouldn't even really be a bonfire, to be honest. Um, and here we are at the bonfire. Alright. Well, let's heal on up real fast. And we have two NPCs. We have Henri and we have Horse the Hushed. So first we'll talk to Henri. Oh, hello. How do you do? I am Henri of Astora. Unkindled like you. This is Horace, a friend and traveling companion. Are you too in search of the Lords of Cinder? We are well along the road of sacrifices. Below us is the crucifixion woods. Beyond the flooded woods lies Farron Keep, home of the undead legion. Further yet is the Cathedral of the Deep. We seek the Cathedral, home of the grim Aldrich. We may go our separate ways now, but we are both seekers of Lords. The next time we cross paths, one may find the other in a time of need. May the, may the flames guide your way. So the interesting thing about Henri is depending on the gender of your character, if you're playing as a male, Henri will be female. If you're playing as a female, Henri will be a male. And this is because she actually ties into the third ending of the game. Um, late game, they basically become your um, significant other. Well, that's a weird way to put it. They just become your your uh, bride or your husband. And it's... I don't even know if I'd really call it that. I don't want to really spoil what happens. But let's just say they're related to the end of the game. Horse the Hushed here. This is where we get the Blue Sentinels. Obviously a, a throwback to uh, Berserk. God, what's his name? Um... Bozu, is it, I think? It's the knight that the Guts first tears down, the guy with the big axe, looking at the armor. You can see the similarities, the face mask, the gloves, all that stuff. And they're also going to come into play later. Um, but either way, now we are at the Halfway Fortress, and this is where things get a, a bit trickier. So, uh, we have a big old swamp uh, down below us. We also have a bunch of dudes, these guys right here with trees. Now, I'm not entirely sure if you can parry them. I actually tried to parry these guys on stream for quite a while, and I was unable to parry the tree. Um, either way, we're going to take a uh, very solid approach to this area, so we're going to drop down a soul here. Yes. Um, and before we get all the way down, we're going to go over there and grab some titanite. Bad dog. Right, thankfully, the other tree guys haven't noticed me yet. Alright, so what we're going to do here is stick along to the far right of the path first. Um, now, there's going to be little crabs and giant crabs. You should avoid them for now. Kill these guys. They can shoot out a poison cloud, so do be aware of that. Um, these guys are actually really aggressive, so try and open with a heavy attack on them. They, like, break your neck in six different ways when they attack you, so you don't really want to mess with them. I remember, there should be one more of them hiding around here. Shard off him, that's nice. Where are you at, other neckbreaker dude? There he is. Oh, man. Ooh. Oh! Oh man, almost got that grab attack. There we go. Alright, um, so... There's some stuff in this swamp we're going to grab, but before that we're going to go into here. Um, you see a shortcut right here. This will open up later. As you can see, it does not open from this side. Over there we have a black knight. But before we mess with him, we're going to swing around this way. We're going to go up here and uh, we will get the sellsword gear, which is the starting gear for the, uh, I believe it's the mercenary class gear. Yes. All right. So for the black knight, now if you drop down, uh, there's the sellsword blades. If you walk up very slowly, do I have my leather shield? I do. Put that on. Uh, walk up very slow, right up to his back. Oh, oh, he turned around. 
So we're not going to be parrying him today. Or not, excuse me, not parrying, but backstab. But you can't get a free backstab on him. Um, that being said, because he is using a Ultra Grade Sword and he's using it one-handed, you can parry him. If you can get the parry timing, which... As I mentioned, parry timing is one of my biggest weaknesses. Uh, don't feel scared to use your Estus. There we go. Um, as soon as we get through this, we're actually going to be heading back to the bonfire. There we go. Black Knight down. So I haven't been able to actually get their weapons yet. Uh, traditionally, you are able to farm Black Knights for their weapons. Um, so get the Cellsword Twin Blades, and then most importantly, run all the way down to the end to pick up your Farron Coal. And this is going to unlock a number of new infusions for you at the Blacksmith, so definitely really good to pick up. And this is where things are going to get a little bit tricky. So... There are these giant crab enemies that we're going to have to fight. Now, it's unconfirmed, but supposedly, if you manage to kill the giant crab without any of its babies dying, it'll drop a spell for you. Um, I've tried doing it, and I've actually had the, the crab kill some of its babies just kind of in the crossfire. So, if there is a very easy way to guarantee this, I'd be curious myself. Um, I know you can stagger these guys, and after staggering them, you can... Get a, uh, get a riposte on their center torso area. That being said, I feel like a lot of their attacks come from the center. So I usually just try and avoid them as much as I can and get in damage when I can. Uh, but in general, they're, they're kind of a tricky enemy because they don't really have a clear weakness. At least not one that I've found yet. That center smash, as you saw, kind of hard to avoid when he drops his whole entire body down. He has the spit that'll slow you. That's probably one of the best times to actually get in a few hits. We are doing very well against the crab. Uh, it's worth mentioning that he also... No! He also has a grab attack that hurts a lot if it connects. If you get in trouble, don't feel bad about retreating. These crabs are not fun after all. Um, but I'm going to try and finish him off. He's half dead. Oh god, no, he burrowed. Why did you have to do that right now? Hello, baby crab. Okay, well, since he burrowed, um, we're going to go over here ourselves the Conjuration Gear and the Great Swamp Pyromancy Tome. Um, where are you at? Come back out, Crab. This Crab actually drops the Great Swamp Ring. Yellowfinger Heisel. Where is he at? I don't have time for him right now. Might just Homeward Bone back and get her to the... Oh no, I can't use it while being invaded, I guess. What the hell? Why did you just disappear? This is actually a good opportunity, because if we can take down Heisel, we'll get back, um... Oh, wait, I'm doing this all wrong. First thing I'm going to do is fight him over here where I can quick roll. Lure him over. Sharpen my baby. Break. Thankfully, that. Oh no! That did do damage. It did a lot. <laughs> I did not expect he was going to get that much damage in with it. Okay. Yellowfinger Heisel's down. That should get me back some Estus Flasks. One of the really neat things about invaders in this game is that killing them will replenish your Estus, so that worked out quite nicely. Um, so I still don't know where the crab is at. In lieu of that, we're going to go get um, some of the items in the swamp, 
There's the Fallen Knight set, which is probably one of the most badass looking sets aesthetically in Dark Souls 3, in addition to uh, two things of Green Blossoms. So here we have Green Blossom. There's the second crab. We're going to go get ourselves the... Oh, no, crab. No, no, no. All right, instead, before we fight the crab, we're going to go get the middle bonfire. So middle bonfire is right here in the center of the woods. Uh, if we run kind of this way... Uh, right here, around this big rock. And uh, there we go. That's the gateway. You want to look for that gateway. When you see that gateway, you know you're at the bonfire. the rest of the crabs. Let me see if I can lure him over for a plunging attack. I like how he just, he had zero fucks to give about the fact that I'm hitting him like that. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but the crabs also have a grab attack. You know, makes sense. They have these giant pincers. There we go. <clears throat> we did enough damage to... No, we didn't follow up on any time. Um, so if you do enough damage to get the crab to drop like that, you can get in uh, right here in the center area and do a repost. Um, for those coming from Bloodborne, it's the same thing as a visceral. When I say repost, it's, you know, when they're, an enemy is in a weakened state and you can follow up and get a uh, very damaging attack on them right now. Nope, not in position for it again, but that's okay. Crab went down. Biggest threat in the swamp is vanquished. Alright, so we're going to run over here. Uh, this should be our Fallen Knight set. Yes. Uh, now, where are our blossoms? Blossoms, blossoms, blossoms. Over there. There's our green blossoms again. Okay. And now we're going to go take down that other crab, and we're going to get the... Uh, Swamp Ring off of him. Um, so don't go over here yet. There's two NPCs you're going to have to fight. We're going to do them in just a second. Stop with the squishing. So I'm not sure if it's a damage type thing, like maybe uh, clubs and stuff do more damage to the crabs, you know? Kind of like you're cracking the shell. Um, oh, we got the pince! On stream, we tried out both piercing and slashing type weapons, and I didn't notice a major difference in damage between the two of those. Obviously, with the dex build, you don't have any blunt type weapons on hand. I don't think I have any right now either. Thrust and slash, no. Oh, come on, man. I'm looking at items. Fuck off. Glad to see that trees do not apply to blocking you. Is it just me or does it seem like this one crab is way more aggressive and brutal than the other crab that we killed? Oh my god, the fat rolls? I might actually die. No, not today. Guts is not going down. Come here, crab. You need to die. You need to die. See, the other difficult thing about this crab is that you have to, like, the water over here is much deeper, so by default, you're fat rolling. Uh, if you get him over here, you can do skinny roll, but right now I'm covered in his, his slime. As you can see, my movement speed is a bit slower. Um, we're going to wait for that to fall off. Oh, 
god. I saw the foam with the mouth, figured he was gonna do the spray. Instead, he went for another pinch. He's almost dead, though. God! Vicking cribs. And there's our great swamp ring. So I don't believe we killed any of the little dudes yet. I still don't see a spell from that. Um, either way, we're gonna go get another bonfire um, real fast. And then after that bonfire, we're gonna wrap up this and continue on the rest of Crucifixion Woods in the following episode. So as I mentioned, there's two enemies up here. Originally, the route I wanted us to take um, was coming down, do the Black Knight, kill that crab, get the ring, grab the items, and then go over here. As the bonfire we grabbed is important to get before the boss, but um, not necessarily needed for going into this area. So, I'm just going to run past these guys for now, go straight down the ladder. For those curious, you can hold B to uh, slide down ladders. And here we have a bonfire. So this is the Farron Keep bonfire. Um, we're going to be doing this area a little bit later before we approach Farron Keep. We're going to be going through the Cathedral of the Deep area. But even before that, we still have the remainder of the Crucifixion Woods as well as the boss of this area. So either way, that's half the woods. Um, coming up in the next episode, we're going to be showing you guys where the Grass Crest Shield is, an excellent shield that has some stamina regeneration. Uh, on top of that, there's the Twin Dragon Great Shield, some Titanite. Um, we get the Exile Curve Great Sword and Great Slug or Great Club from the two NPCs up above. Um, aside from that, we also find the Sorcery Trainer, um, as well as just some associated random items, and there is also an Estus Shard coming back as well for the boss. So, either way, with that in mind, we will catch you guys in the next episode when we take on the rest of Crucifixion Woods.